Hi everyone, Darren Underwood here at Interval Zero. I'm here today to introduce our Kingstar PLC product. Following a short introduction of Kingstar PLC, I will walk you through a quick start tutorial of the software. The Kingstar Programmable Logic Controller provides cost-effective, deterministic, embedded machine control for high-volume industrial automation environments. Most PLC solutions today provide limited and effective mechanisms for integration with other real-time modules. Many deliver siloed and proprietary real-time processing that is difficult or incapable of natively interacting, executing, or sharing resources with third-party modules like motion control or machine vision. The Kingstar PLC addresses these limitations by providing an intuitive user experience for both software developers and PLC programmers. Operations like kinematics can be developed in native C++, while PLC programming can be done using the IEC 61131-3 languages. With the Kingstar PLC, you get a fully featured and integrated software PLC powered by an open and accessible RTOS and motion control platform. The Kingstar PLC is built on top of the Kingstar machine automation platform, which is itself powered by the Interval Zero's RTX 64 RTOS for Windows. The Logic Lab PLC has been integrated and optimized for the Kingstar automation platform to offer outstanding performance. The Kingstar automation platform, which includes the Kingstar PLC, can be downloaded and used for 90 days. The evaluation license is fully functional and only limited by the timeout period. The Kingstar PLC has direct access to I.O. via the Kingstar purpose-based EtherCAT master, and the PLC also has access to the drives and the motion libraries through the provided motion function blocks. The Kingstar PLC Logic Lab development tools and the runtime are powered by Axel Logic Lab. Logic Lab is an IEC 61131-3 development environment, which is the most widely used standard for programming industrial controls today. Kingstar Logic Lab supports structured text, ladder logic, and all the other IEC 61131-3 programming languages. Kingstar PLC is PLC open compliant with Part 1, Version 2, Basics and Extensions, and Part 4, Coordinated Motion via the provided function blocks. With every new update of the Kingstar PLC, we strive to improve our compliance coverage. The runtime and the development tools are so light on system resources that the programming environment and the runtime can easily execute on the same system. There's no need for a separate development system or a laptop, but it does support that option as well. Robust HMIs can be developed and run directly on the PLC target system via the .NET and the native interfaces. Third-party HMI software is supported via the integrated OPC UA server. Okay, so now that you've been introduced to the Kingstar PLC and what it is, let's start with the quick start to introduce you to the tools and how to create a project and walk you through some of the uh, various windows of the tool set itself. So let's get started. So with this quick start tutorial, I'm going to walk you through the installation process a little bit, talk about project creation, project activation, execution, talk about the various windows uh, in the tool set that you'll be using, um, do a little bit about variable watching, how you can actually watch your variables in the watch window as the program is executing, and then we'll just wrap things up at the end. In terms of the install, what I want to do is just show you the two things that I did install, and that's the soft motion runtime, which does include the PLC targets, and then also our Logic Lab tools, which are the PLC tools that we're going to use to actually build the PLC programming. From there, um, I've already done the installation on this machine, so I'm not going to walk through it. It's a fairly simple process. Now, once you have that installed, what we want to do is go down and make sure that um, all the, the engines are executing. So if I go down to the control panel here, the Kingstar control panel, we'll see right now that there is nothing uh, executing. So the RTX subsystem is stopped, the, which obviously means that the Kingstar subsystem and the PLC are not executing. So I'm going to go ahead at this point, before we get started with the rest of the tutorial, and make sure that the PLC is up and running. I'm just going to turn the PLC on. It'll subsequently load everything uh, below that. So that's the RTX uh, 64 subsystem, the TCP IP stack, the Kingstar subsystem, and then ultimately the Kingstar PLC. So as we can see they're starting to come up now and there we have the window that pops up and gives us a lot of information about what has happened 
since we click the button to start and then we can see at the bottom of the output window that the system has been started and now we can move on to looking at the tools and building a project. There are a couple different ways to actually launch into the Kingstar uh, Logic Lab tools. Um, when we did the installation, it actually put a couple of icons uh, that you can click over here on the desktop directly, and that's the Kingstar Control Panel, which we've already seen earlier, and the Logic Lab tools. Now, what I do generally, though, is I use the Kingstar Control Panel as kind of my launching pad for basically everything that I do with the PLC. So, as we showed you earlier, you can start and stop the subsystem and the PLC um, from this control panel, but the control panel also offers uh, these hyperlinks that you can then get you to all of the different uh, tools that we have, including the Logic Lab tool. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and click on the Logic Lab hyperlink, and that'll get us right to the tool set. Okay, so now that we have the tools open, I just want to take a look at a couple of the windows um, that are available. We won't look at all of them in this tutorial. Uh, just the ones that we're going to need to actually show you how to create a new project and use some of the uh, the watch variables. So for now, the if we look at the left, that's the project tree that's going to show you all the project uh, files and, and I.O. and resources, etc. Below that's the output window. Um, our main focus right now, though, is going to be on the centering window, which is where all the the text files are going to show up. So if you're doing ladder or ST, etc., all the programming uh, editors will be in this area. Um, and it is TAD, but the first thing you notice is that there's a welcome screen when you first open the tool set. And this gives you quick links to do things like creating a new project or opening a new a, uh, project that already exists. And there's already a, uh, a populated list of, of files or projects that you've already had open in the past, so you can just quick link to those and get those open right away. So the first thing we're going to do, though, is we're going to open a new project and start working with that. So when we created the project, it created the main program like we discussed earlier, and it also created this uh, CNT variable, this count variable. If we open up main, we'll see that what we're doing with the count variable is simply using it as a means of incrementing, so it acts much like a watchdog every time we run the fast task. And if you note that this task or this program has already already been added to the fast task, which is down here underneath the fast task tab, one thing we can also do is click the task, double click it, and what we see is the actual time period that these tasks run at. So if we just uh, concern ourselves today with the fast and the slow task, we can see that the fast task is running at 10 milliseconds, which is 10 times our I or 10 times slower than our I/O rate of one millisecond, and the slow task is running at 50 milliseconds, which is five times slower than our fast task. So this is where you're going to do things that aren't necessarily as critical as they would be in the fast task. To demonstrate how easy it is to work with programs and variables, let's create a new program that we're going to put in the slow task, and we'll call it slow main. So let's right click on the demo project, then you get a context menu, um, and add, and right here we'll select new program, and from there we get the pop-up uh, dialog box, and we're going to create an ST program. We're going to call it slow main, just to keep it easy, and in this case we're going to actually select the slow task to assign it to. So by doing this it's going to create the, the program for us and it's going to automatically assign it to the slow task as we can see down here under the task list. Now if we open slow main we'll see that there's nothing there now. We want to create a new variable for that so let's first go to our global list. We're going to insert and create a new variable called slow count, slow CNT in my case and we're going to make it an integer just like the other one and we should be good there and now let's go back to our slow main and in slow main we can now add slow cnt and equals slow cnt itself plus one <clears throat> and this is going to achieve the same thing that count variable does on the fast task and it's going to increment once every time the slow task actually gets executed Okay, so let's actually verify that we are executing on the PLC target. Now the way we're going to do that is via the last thing that I want to talk to you about today, and that's the watch window. It's very easy to just grab any type of variable you want, whether it be I.O. or a uh, global variable, etc., and just drag and drop it into the watch window. So we're going to do that right now by going to our global variable list and grabbing both our count variables 
and we're going to just drag and drop them right in there and you can see they're already spinning because our PLC is running. And at any given time we should be able to stop this and see that slow count is actually about five times slower or smaller in terms of its value than count and that's because it has a five times slower cycle time. So that's about it for today. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check back soon for more tutorials and walkthroughs of the Interval Zero Kingstar PLC product.